Hello and welcome. I'm Sachin Brahme with Avaya Serviceability Engineering. In this video, we'll see how to use real-time campaign update in Avaya Proactive Contact. A campaign update feature allows you to mark records uncallable on the outbound calling list. There are two types of campaign updates, batch and real-time. In this video, we'll be talking about only the real-time campaign update. The call cancel parameter in the master.cfg should be set to yes to turn on the campaign update feature. The status flag field in the calling list record is marked with the letter C to mark that record as uncallable. The real-time campaign update is used with overflow or intelligent call blending setup where the inbound calls are handled by the proactive contact itself. It is not applicable to the predictive agent blending type of setup where the inbound calls are handled by the ACD. The real-time campaign update feature is typically used where you have customers calling into the inbound by themselves and so you want to be able to tell the proactive contact to not make an outbound call to that customer again. When an inbound call is received on the proactive contact by a blend or an inbound type agent working on a blend job, the agent can mark that customer's record as uncallable on the outbound calling list associated to that blend job he is working on. On the screen is a similar example where you see a client making a call into the inbound. This inbound call is handled by a blend or an inbound agent logged into a blend job running on the proactive contact. The agent then takes the necessary details on the phone from the client online and marks his record uncallable on the outbound calling list so that this client is not called now from the outbound calling list. Let's now see how this is configured from the editor application. The first step is to set up the real-time campaign update on a calling list. For that, I log in to the editor application and I go to the calling list section. Here I can see the available calling lists in my system. Please note that you need to turn on the real-time campaign update on every calling list individually which you want to configure it on. For our example, I'll choose list 44. I'll do a right click and go to calling list details. You will see a section in the right pane for campaign update. To enable it, I will check this checkbox and from the drop down, I will choose the mode as real time. If on a calling list, batch mode is already turned on, then you should choose both. I will save the list in pending mode now and these changes will be made live after a midnight maintenance cycle. And you can see after the midnight maintenance, the list is showing active. Now that the changes to the list have been made active, the next step would be to configure the blend job. So I go to the job section on the editor. For this example, I'll be using the job camp underscore blend as my blend job. You can see the job type is blend for this job. I'll click on it and it will display the job settings on the right pane. You can see the various job settings like the outbound and inbound calling lists, the screen names, the agent key files, etc. If you scroll down, there will be this section for post processing. Please note that if you don't see this section on your blend job, it will first need to be turned on from the command line by making a change in the blend.edt file so that it starts showing up on the editor. In here, there are three settings related to the real-time campaign update, the ones highlighted in yellow. The first one is showing the command it runs, that is the record underscore ed, to edit the calling list record for marking the status flag field with the character C. In this example, the first instance of list one is the outbound calling list name and the second instance is the screen name. The screen name showing here may or may not be the same as you used for the outbound screen on your job. But this screen must contain the mention of the unique key field which is the account number for this example. The next setting is the criteria. This tells which completion code should the agent release the inbound call with so that it triggers the record underscore ed process to search that customer's record on the outbound calling list and mark it as uncallable. So for this example, the completion codes mentioned here are 21 and 22. You can have one or more than one completion codes here separated by commas. The next setting tells which key field to be used to search the customer's record in the outbound calling list. And as we discussed, it's the account number for this example. So to summarize, what these three settings are telling you is that when an inbound or a blend agent working on this blend job receives an inbound call, the customer narrates the account number over the phone to the agent. The agent populates that account number on his screen and then releases the call with either completion code 21 or 22. This triggers the record underscore ed which searches for this account number 
on the outbound calling list associated to the blend job and if that account number is found it marks the status flag with the character C to make it as uncallable. Another important setting is the lines or the regs that you associate to your blend job. As you can see for this job it is one outbound and one inbound reg. If you are having more than one blend job running it is always a good idea to distribute your line pools so that different blend jobs are using different line pools. Let's talk about this briefly. On the screen you have two examples of the inbound calls coming to the two blend jobs. If you are running multiple blend jobs and you want the real time campaign update to be run simultaneously on multiple calling lists then it is best to have the inbound line pools separated on the ACD. The example on the left of the screen is showing the same thing. There are two inbound line pools 1 and 2 separately coming from the ACD and then the two blend jobs are using them separately as INB1 and INB2. And the two blend jobs are running with their own calling lists INBND1 and INBND2. So if a call comes into the line pool 1 it will land on the blend job 1 and so the campaign update can be run to mark the outbound list of blend job 1. And similarly if it comes to line pool 2 the campaign update will mark the outbound list of blend job 2. So basically you have identified separate inbound line pools for separate blend jobs. Now on the other example on the right of your screen there is only one inbound line pool. So incoming calls can go to either of the two blend jobs. There will be no control as to which job should take the inbound call that comes in. So let's say if a customer whose record is present on the outbound calling list 2 if he calls in and by chance the inbound call comes into the blend job 1 the campaign update will search for the record in the outbound calling list 1 only. It will not check it in the list 2. So this way that customer's record will remain untouched on list 2 and will not be marked as uncallable and so it can then get called out from the blend job 2. Hence it is best to have the inbound line pools set up in a way that the inbound line pools are separated and are assigned to separate blend jobs. Now let's see how this works that is how the agent takes the inbound call and marks the record uncallable on the outbound list. On the screen you can see a job on screen displaying the camp underscore blend job running. There is another window showing the values from the account number and status flag fields of the outbound calling list that is associated to this blend job. You can see that currently all the status flag fields are showing null characters which means they are blank and so these records are callable currently. I also have an agent application on which I have logged in as a blend agent and I will join this camp underscore blend job and take the inbound call. I'll click on the join job button and choose the camp underscore blend job to join. And as you can see I have an inbound call on my screen now. And the inbound screen has the account number field which is blank currently. Now let's say the customer online gives me his account number and I will populate it in the given box. Let's pick one of the account numbers from the outbound calling list and assume that this is the number that the customer provided us. I'll copy that and paste it in the account number box on the inbound screen. I populate the name of the customer. Then I go to the work menu and choose save data so that the data gets saved in the inbound calling list also. Then I release the line and choose completion code 21. This has to be one of the completion codes that I had mentioned in the job earlier. After that I'll do finish work to move on to the next record. And the call has been disposed now. Now let's check the outbound list for the status flag fields again. I'll do the same command and as you can see the status flag field has been marked with the character C for that record and hence it has been marked uncallable now. This takes effect on the running job itself so you don't need to start and stop your job again. And even when later on you run a new record selection for starting another job this record which we marked uncallable will not be picked up on the record selection and hence it will not get dialed. So we saw how an agent working on a blend job took an inbound call and marked that same customer's record uncallable on the outbound calling list. That concludes this demonstration. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback you may write to us at mentor at or at Avaya Mentor on Twitter. Thank you for choosing Avaya.